This is my list of what I think are the greatest Halo levels ever created, beginning with my 10th favourite of all time and ending with the very best of a very amazing bunch. One or two of them are a bit different from the norm, some are from the start of the series, others later on, and there might even be an entry that veers into horror territory included as well. I'm going to kick things off on the wrong foot too, by being a bit cheeky, as I first want to give an honourable mention to Halo Reach's final flourish, Lone Wolf. It's not in my top 10 simply because I consider it to be more a cleverly done prologue than a full-blown level, but I was so very close to including it nonetheless. Consider this brief but brilliant ending sequence to be a sneaky 11th choice of sorts on my list. My first proper selection is Halo 4's Reclaimer, and while there may be nine others ahead of it, make no mistake, it's still an absolute banger. I know even including a single example from a 343 Industries-led Halo will be blasphemy to some, but I genuinely believe Reclaimer to be one of the best the series has to offer. The mammoth much of it is centred around adds a fresh new dynamic as you use your jetpack to hop on and off to protect the enormous vehicle as you travel across the sands of Requiem. Halo's sandbox is all about giving you as much choice as possible, and this new concept I think definitely adds to that. The on-foot and vehicular combat you'll have no doubt become accustomed to is still present and correct, but now there's an extra dynamic to consider which opens up a wealth of extra possibilities. Although, it's not all plain sailing, and sadly there are still some pretty heinous glitches associated with the mammoth still present in the game to this very day. There's also a lore dump of epic proportions halfway through Reclaimer's runtime, which I'm not a massive fan of either, as too much information is imparted in too short a space of time, which I think a lot of people might struggle with. Thankfully, the mission ends on a high note as you exit a Forerunner facility and are met with absolute carnage unfolding in front of you. It's exactly the sort of chaos which springs to mind when I think about some of Halo's best outdoor sections, and the inclusion of a Scorpion run to cap things off is no bad thing either. Reclaimer is the best of 343's time with Halo, and I hope one day they'll be able to sustain such quality across an entire game. Moving swiftly on to Bungie-developed titles, next up is Halo 2's Delta Halo. In ninth place, it is the only level from 2 which makes the cut. My big issue with its campaign is that a lot of the time, its gameplay doesn't feel much like a Halo title to me. I would consider Halo in its purest form, at least in gameplay terms, to be about moving fluidly between wide open combat arenas chock full of possibilities, and more frantic engagements in narrower spaces with a mix of verticality, vehicles and violence thrown in for good measure. Halo 2 generally struggles in this regard, but during Delta Halo, Bungie gets its spot on, and when I first played the game, it provided some reassurance that the Halo magic still existed after a middling start to the game. Opening with a cutscene depicting Master Chief and a group of ODSTs plummeting towards Installation 05, although let's be honest the highlight is of course this cute little fella, the mission immediately springs to life as you shoot your way through heavily guarded ruins using the unusual loadout of an SMG and rocket launcher. That's followed by a brief Warthog section and a much longer Scorpion sequence, which blended with Delta Halo's start make the experience almost feel like a cross between Combat Evolves the Silent Cartographer and Assault on the Control Room, rounding things out with an encounter in a canyon which is great fun on lower difficulties and a tad annoying on anything else, plus an encounter with a few Honor Guards, what you get is a finely paced affair which arrives at just the right moment in Halo 2's campaign. The surroundings events take place in are also gorgeous, and again, much like with its gameplay, examining things from an aesthetic and musical perspective, it looks and sounds most like a traditional Halo mission too. Indeed, cutting through waves of Covenant while surrounded by the crumbling buildings of a civilization long past as the terrific track Peril plays in the background is one of my prevailing memories of the title as a whole. If Delta Halo is the quintessential Halo level in 2, then for my money number 8 tip of the spear is the equivalent in Halo Reach. Reach, I think, is the most balanced campaign in any of the five Bungie-developed Halo titles, and Tip of the Spear is the mission in it which best combines everything that makes Halo Halo in a single level. It features solid on-foot combat, varied vehicular battles, and a solid turret section, all of which take place under some frankly gorgeous skyboxes. You're never stuck doing the same thing for too long, but boredom ever threatens to creep in, and the constant switching between different styles works well contextually. Not only does it keep 
keep you engaged, but it also makes you feel like you really have been caught slap bang in the middle of a big, messy conflict. In addition, there's an opening sequence which never fails to put a smile on my face, I'd really love to see more like it in future titles, and a conclusion which marks the beginning of Reach's transition in tone from upbeat to something far more sombre, both of which perfectly bookend the excellent action sandwiched in between them. Honestly, it's so good that it makes me wish the second half of Reach had an equivalent, one similar in structure which took place across the scorched earth of a planet on its last legs. If I had one criticism, it would be catch driving if you choose to take to the Warthog cannons early on. I'm pretty sure I could do better and I'm nowhere close to being a highly trained super soldier and I can't drive. All in all, Tip of the Spear is definitely a highlight when it comes to Halo Reach's campaign and this won't be the last you hear about the game before this video finishes. Much like Halos 2 and 4, Halo 3 ODST only appears once during this video and the level I've chosen from it is NMPD HQ. It might be a surprise to see it in 7th place given I generally place greater stock in missions which feature most if not all of the Halo sandbox, but this is the first of three exceptions to that rule I want to talk about. Of that trio, I reckon this one is the biggest outlier, as along with what some might perceive as a lack of variety, it's also over in a flash. However, we must also remember that this is a mission from ODST, and ODST is a game which consists only of shorter outings. Looking at it in that light, there's little I can fault about it and a whole lot to love. What sets it apart for me is the fact that most levels in Halo featuring sniper sections tend to encourage a stealthy approach, until you're discovered that is. NMPD HQ on the other hand says to hell with all that softly softly nonsense and throws you in straight at the deep end. Rather than allowing you all the time in the world to sneak around and pick off Covenant one by one, you're instead tasked with taking on groups of enemies which ramp up in difficulty across three arenas which increase in complexity the further you progress. The difficulty curve during its first half is nigh on perfect. Also, you're sniping baddies on the rooftop of a police station in New Mombasa during an alien invasion. It's one of my favourite urban settings in the entire series. It would be remiss of me not to mention its final encounter as well, which is just as good as those featured earlier on. As Romeo, joined by Buck, you cross a makeshift bridge and are reunited with squadmates Mickey and Dutch, at which point you've no other option than to stand your ground while being attacked by what seems like an endless stream of Covenant. Using any weaponry you can get your hands on, it is an absolute brawl, made all the more intense thanks to the inclusion of the unreleased track Air Traffic Patrol. It's an excellent way to end NMPD HQ, a slice of Halo I'd describe as the very definition of short but sweet. New Alexandria, sixth in my ranking, is a level I absolutely adore, but it also makes me a tad sad too. Why? Well, because it, more than any other level included in Halo Reach, is a shining example of Bungie still being able to bring fresh ideas to the table even in their fifth game in the series. I wish they'd have stayed with the franchise into the following generation of consoles, as it's clear they still had plenty of desire to innovate. The idea of flying between locations in a Falcon is a novel one to begin with, and the random elements incorporated into the mission structure complement it perfectly. The order you need to visit the hospital, nightclub and penthouse in to take down communications jammers is randomised, and in between you'll also be assigned different secondary objectives, one at a time in single and two player, and two at a time if three or four Spartans are working together. While the secondary tasks are interesting enough, it's the three primary objectives which are particularly engaging. Each has its own distinct flavour and they all feel quite unique. The penthouse is the most narrow and features a chilling backing track as you're left with no choice to flee before you're overwhelmed. The nightclub is the largest and pairs up hunters with thumping music, and the hospital is somewhere in the middle, a more measured area with a reserved tune to match. Everything I've just mentioned does work wonderfully, but the star of the show is undoubtedly the city of New Alexandria itself. It may well be the most atmospheric level in the entire franchise. Opening on a despondent Noble Six, you quickly come to understand why he's so down in the dumps as you fly above a city bathed in orange light, a beautiful but horrific reminder of the destruction below. As you progress, more and more Covenant ships arrive to continue reducing the city to ash, and the victories you do achieve begin to feel like little more than the smallest of silver linings to a very, very dark cloud. Something made abundantly clear during New Alexandria's ending sequence as Cat meets her maker in shocking circumstances. 
There are a few Halo missions which leave as strong an impression as this one does. Next up is another entry from Halo Reach, except this time we're back at ground level, or close enough anyway. I've given the fifth spot on my list to Exodus, as for me it was seven years in the making and totally worth waiting for. I know I always harp on and on about Halo 2's E3 2003 demo set on city streets on Earth, but it really was the most excited I reckon I've ever been for a video game following a trailer. Halo 2 did include several missions set on our home planet, and while they were pretty good, none of them came close to replicating the incredible atmosphere and set pieces I'd been so excited about about playing through prior to its release. The phrase better late than never certainly rings true however, and with Reach's arrival came Exodus, the mission which finally gave me the high quality urban skirmishes I'd been craving for so many years. Granted, it doesn't feature many vehicles, which some might think a prerequisite when thinking about Halo's greatest levels, but there's still plenty of other distractions to keep you occupied. During its early stages you have to avoid grunts intent on taking out both themselves and you, and soon enough you'll also have to worry about protecting civilians from hordes of brutes who arrive on the scene in huge numbers. There's some jetpack based entertainment midway through which serves as a palate cleanser of sorts, and a falcon gunner section which I think trumps that featured in Tip of the Spear due to the impressive sense of scale it gives you as New Alexandria begins to fall. There is a very short warthog section towards the end, but I'm not convinced it really even needed to be included at all, as the street fighting, so to speak, is so completely and utterly engrossing. By the end of the previous mission, Long Night of Solace, you'd come to understand just how much trouble Reach was in, and by the end of Exodus, you've seen the devastation caused by the Covenant firsthand after crashing back down to Earth, a marvellous metaphor for a magnificent part of Reach's campaign. Just missing out on a podium finish is the Ark, the first of two levels from Halo 3's stunning second half. It is a mission which has a dash of everything that makes Halo so remarkable, and there isn't a single dip in quality during its entire runtime, which is particularly impressive given it's one of the longer entries on this list. Do you enjoy sniping sections in your Halo games? Well, the Ark has you covered. How about longer vehicle sections which use the franchise's sandbox to its fullest extent? It has plenty of that too. What about a face-off with a scarab? Not to worry, there's one of those as well. There really is something for everyone, and if you prefer more traditional encounters, there's a good number of those to boot as you battle brutes inside a forerunner structure near its end. The appearance of the forward unto dawn halfway through the mission, a spectacle in and of itself, also ushers in what I believe to be one of Halo's very best vehicular sections as you retrace your steps back to a previously locked door while blasting everything in sight to smithereens. Halo 3's campaign is very strong, and it's one of the most consistent quality-wise Bungie ever produced along with Reach, but it wasn't until I began playing the arc that 3, for me, was elevated from being a very well done Halo title to possibly the best in the entire trilogy. Earlier levels like Tasavo Highway did sort of hint at the magic to come, however I didn't expect anything anywhere near as superb as the arc to be included based on what had come prior. It is perhaps the most cinematic entry in this ranking, which begins the final third of the Halo trilogy's final chapter with a bang, and it is also a stark reminder that while guns and warthogs will always prove useful, tank beats everything. The Silent Cartographer, the level I'd guess most will think of first when Halo Combat Evolved is brought up, takes home the bronze medal in my ranking of the greatest Halo missions ever made. Third might even seem a little harsh given how good it is, but this is less anything to do with the Silent Cartographer's failings, of which there are few, if any, and more down to the simple fact that the two missions which finish above it are also absolutely spectacular. This was the part of the game Bungie chose to use in demo form to market Halo ahead of its PC release, and it's easy to see why. I thoroughly dislike the overuse of the word iconic nowadays, but I think it's fair to say that the silent cartographer's opening really is just that, as you're dropped onto a beach alongside a gaggle of marines and storm a very well designed area which funnels you up its middle to keep the action intense, while Halo's theme, one of the best in all of gaming, fills your ears. And then, once the beach is clear, you're left to your own devices. You can follow the intended path, heading to the building housing the cartographer, then the security room, and back again. Or you can go to the security room straight away and skip the first step. Or you can just drive around the island, breathing everything in. You're given complete freedom to decide exactly how to tackle things, and in what order. 
Back in 2001, this non-linear style was a revelation, and at the time, there was nothing I'd played that came remotely close to matching it on any console. Its dynamic structure is also paired with a narrative which really makes it feel like events are happening in real time around you, with Keys and Fohammer chiming in regularly over the radio, and Covenant squads being constantly ferried in to try and stop you from reaching the map room. All of that is also backed up by a diverse array of combat encounters, my favourite ramp in any game ever, and a crazy amount of hunters considering how early in the campaign the level appears. The silent cartographer is Halo Combat Evolved at its very best, and it's a level I think will continue to be considered one of the finest ever made for many years to come. This next one may be somewhat unexpected considering I just said the silent cartographer is Halo Combat Evolved at its finest. My second selection is 343 Guilty Spark, a level which more than any other transcends the franchise. Not only is it an excellent Halo level, but it's also one of the finest examples of video game horror in general, and an absolute masterclass in how to build atmosphere and subvert player expectations in a big, big way. The headline, of course, is the introduction of parasitic space zombies The Flood, but it's what's done on either side of that reveal that helps place 343 Guilty Spark above practically every other mission in the Halo series. It's an interesting one, as if you play through it without paying much attention, you might not think it's anything special. On the other hand, if you work your way through it keeping your eyes peeled, you're bound to catch at least one or two of the numerous clever little details littered throughout. Traversing the swamp at its start, you can spot shadowy figures darting around ahead of you, and if you listen closely, you might hear sounds that in retrospect do sound a lot like the flood. Searching for Captain Keys inside the facility, you may also begin to wonder why there are no elites to be found within the Covenant's ranks, what happened to the very bloody corpses you discover, and why a lone marine you come across is frightened out of his mind. And then you witness video footage of what happened to Keys and his squad, an obvious but also confidently executed reference to the film Aliens, the flood arrive en masse, and everything quickly goes to hell. Even during the ensuing nightmare, there are still plenty more clever touches to spot too. The flood become more of a threat over time to keep you on your toes, and you find the corpses of marines and jackals who put their differences aside and died fighting together. The classic movement tracker suddenly lighting up with a ton of enemies trope is even thrown in as you're ambushed towards its conclusion. It's a perfectly paced, incredibly bleak extravaganza which for a few minutes takes a fantastic sci-fi first-person shooter and turns it into a sci-fi horror a masterclass. Terrifying, brilliant, extraordinary, even these words don't do 343 Guilty Spark justice. It is quite possibly my favourite video game level ever created, and it not being top of the pile is testament to just how good the level I'm about to talk about actually is. Finally, we've reached what I think is the greatest Halo level ever, and I'm sure many of you will have quite rightly expected it to be Halo 3's The Covenant from the moment you clicked on this video. Yes, it may be the safe choice, but there's a reason why that's the case, and that's because I've practically never heard anyone ever describe this mission in anything other than glowing terms. To better the arc, The Covenant needed to be nigh on flawless in its execution, and you know what? It is. I could spend a silly amount of time talking about how outstanding it is from start to finish, but I'll stick to the highlights, of which there are an insane amount. It opens with a beach landing in the mould of the silent cartographer, backed by the cracking song Three Gates, before leaning into the more traditional Halo fare as you begin to explore the area nearby using a warthog and or mongoose. Stopping on the topic of music for a second, this is the best level in the series in that regard, with what must be at least 10 or 15 tracks used over the course of its runtime. Nowhere is the depth of Marty and Michael's work more evident than during this mission. In addition, you also take on two scarabs at once, a first for the series. There's a scorpion run, and you're given the opportunity to use pretty much every weapon and vehicle in the game, which means in terms of variety, nothing else comes close. And who can forget about your brief alliance with the Flood? It may not last very long, but it's about as shocking a twist as you could possibly hope for, a jaw-dropping moment that proved Bungie was still able to surprise even towards the very end of the trilogy. The narrative and pacing throughout the Covenant is also so finely tuned that even though you're constantly being asked to do different things, the changes never feel jarring and every encounter lands with more impact than the last. 
this cutscene, which ends with Master Chief and the Arbiter standing back to back while preparing to fight the Flood, is also blooming brilliant and one of my favourites in the series. If someone who hasn't played Halo ever asks you what the franchise is all about, the Covenant is the level you should point to. I've never played anything so densely packed with such high quality gameplay, extraordinary variety and wonderful storytelling, and I'm not sure I ever will again. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and Spartans. If you thought my list was terrible, or indeed you wholeheartedly agree, then do consider letting me know your thoughts and possibly liking and subscribing, and hopefully I'll see you all again soon.